Guys, what's going on? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back for another video today. We have a busy one. We have a lot to discuss. We're going to talk about 2024 Mustang stuff. We're going to actually kick off this video with a modification. And then we're going to take this S550 to the dealership because I screwed up, guys. It's really embarrassing more than anything. <laughs> okay, so I was doing risers on my Harley and I'm talking to a buddy of mine, Jack, determined veteran on YouTube, go check him out. He was telling me that from his past experience, because this is something that happened to me, this happened to his wife. Some of the kickstands on these Harleys, there's a problem with some of them. They're not as strong as they should be. And anyway, so I was on and off the bike and I was getting the, the, the risers kind of aligned up and everything. What happened was the kickstand collapsed and I almost dropped the bike. I mean, it was like, this close from kissing the ground and it's like the most embarrassing thing i've been riding for like 20 years and nothing like this has ever happened to me the whole thing quit down with me but luckily our s550 2022 brand new gt that we've had for like a month was there to save the day so my shoulder what happened was my shoulder kissed the quarter pedal back here so you're probably not gonna be able to really tell anyway there's a little bit of a crease right here not a crease but like a, a small dent we can go to the dealership and they've got a dent guy there that can probably fix it for like 50 bucks but yeah really embarrassing let me know in the comments is anything like that ever stupid happened to you you know the bike is undamaged and uh you know my shoulder just and, and i digress but before we actually go we're going to install something really cool that i think that a lot of you guys are actually going to want for your s550 mustang and possibly the older ones like your s197s i think the dk's garage has the answer for you and this may actually fit the 2024 and up mustang too now what this is is a trunk handle. All right, so let's go to the back of the car. Let me show you real quick what this is gonna do. And this is cheap, guys. Go follow the links down below in the description to pick up one of these. You can get it as a full kit or you can just get it as a strap and kind of like a DIY kind of deal. Let me show you what this is and why you're probably gonna want to buy one of these right now, like pausing the video, go follow the link down in the description and buy one of these for like super cheap. All right, so basically it's a pull tab that fits inside of the trunk so that you can keep your nasty fingerprints off of the deck lid, which is something we've been plagued with ever since 2015 when this whole design came out with these glossy deck lids. You can see that we've got fingerprints all over this thing because, and even sometimes and even on your spoiler, like this is the GT500. You basically have two choices, raise and lift from here or, you know, here. And we won't, we don't want to do that. Packaging is really nice. It gives you new OEM modified uh, bracketry here. So let's pop the trunk, show you what I'm talking about. So you hit the button, you can come underneath, but when you want to close it, you're obviously going to grab somewhere over here. You're going to get your fingerprints everywhere, or you're going to grab what this is going to do is replace this right here. Should take us like freaking 30 seconds to do this. This is a really cool idea that DK's garage has come up with right there check that out they are really cheap guys so definitely follow the links again down below in the description to pick up one of these when you go see the price of this you're going to be like it's a no-brainer i'm buying it right now but let's install it real quick and then we're going to head up to the dealership see if we can fix this dent and then we're going to come back and have a discussion actually we'll have a discussion on the way up there and we'll talk about the 2024 mustang and why i think i'm not going to pull the trigger on a 2024 mustang for some time keep watching find out why but let's do a little install let's go Got a tiny flathead i find that if you kind of come there's like a little catch like a little lip in here anyway this well there we go this whole thing just slides off like that you see that little thing in there right in there you just want to kind of wedge it and then pull it down screws back here okay so let's open this up and see what's all about so you have a whole new modified whatever this is called okay you know you don't have to get the full kit you can modify your own and just get the strap he's got a couple different options on the website but he sent us the modified one so this is going to make install like really easy but instructions packaging is really well done and then the main show here is our pull tab and they have these like in different uh, embroidered colors so really really cool trick idea here let's see how well it works let's install it 10 millimeter you're gonna loosen these guys up right here kind of fold in like this basically run the nuts back down in an upward position 
finished product. Pretty fancy, little just neat and really cheap cost effective mod for hopefully keeping fingerprints off of our deck lid and our new glossy rear spoiler. Hold on here and we're just gonna slam the trunk lid. Easy. Pause this video, go follow the link down below. Make sure you come back to watch the rest of this video because we're about to dive into 2024 Mustang content and cover all that. But these things are like dirt cheap, no more fingerprints. Pull the pull tab. That's so sick. That is brilliant. DK's garage, links down below. Go check them out. Like, I don't want to come off as like I'm hating on the 2024 Mustang in this video, not at all. I mean, I truthfully am still very 50-50 on this whole S650 refresh, this 2024 Mustang GT. Is it enough to sway my decision to buy one right now? Long story short, no. There's several reasons behind this, and I've kind of wanted to talk about this for a minute. I've had a bunch of SY50s, like four or five of them, I think five and I keep coming back to the S550 chassis because I love it so much but the 2024 people will say there's a lot of Camaro ish looks to it and yes and no all right so the 2015 Mustang came out then the 2016 Camaro and I would actually say that the Camaro mimicked a lot of what the original S550 in 2015 looked like but for 2024 there is some styling similarities between the uh 6th gen camaro and the 24 mustang i get it but i mean guys look <laughs> it's got to be so tough for these these design teams to get together and come up with new ways to make a vehicle it's it's got to be just mind-boggling for these guys it takes years of process and design and artwork and engineering to come up with new ideas so we all thought that the 2024 was going to be a clean sheet build a whole new chassis you know i thought that but it's not it's based off of the s550 and to me when i look at the 2024 it's like an s550.3.0 because you have the 15 the 18 refresh and then now you have the s650 coming out and it's to me a lot of the same old yes we have a new interior but we have the same recaros um we have a lot of the same here and there you know but you know the body work has changed and stuff like that and i like it i honestly do i have come to the point now where when i look at the 2024 and again i'm going to reserve all final judgment until i see one in person okay so pictures just a lot of times don't do these cars justice okay so i'm going to reserve all judgment until i actually see it in person but i'm still so 50 50 on it i like mostly all the car except that the back end loses me still i'm still just i don't like the tail lights i don't like the rear diffuser in the back the bottom diffuser there i think it's just it's a sea of black i just don't know that i like it and of course we have the dark horse and that's improved upon the regular gt but to me it's just kind of like another mach 1 yeah it's a new nameplate new performance nameplate and i appreciate that very much because i think it's the first like uh new performance variant in like 21 years or something like that anyway uh cool to see the dark horse is coming out it's also cool to see that you know ford is not leaving us high and dry with electric just yet you know we're still getting a five liter naturally aspirated mechanical engine an ice internal combustion engine is still going to be available when everybody else is uh selling out you know like dodge camaro they're all either disappearing or they're going electric and with the mustang we still have a naturally aspirated v8 and maybe some supercharged variants coming soon hopefully i think that tuning the S650 is probably not going to be available for aftermarket support for probably one to two years. Rolling encryption and the PCMs are all locked up and it's going to take HP tuners and these other aftermarket support companies to like really unlock these things. So it may take some time, but hopefully they will be able to because I think it's just going to be amazing. Why not would you want to buy a Mustang and not be able to tune it? I mean, that doesn't even make sense. Modifying these cars is what we do. Let me... Um, 
get some gas real quick. All right, so that was like $57 to fill up. Anyway, back on topic. So the S550 is been around, has been around for a long time. The aftermarket support, and I'm not just talking about like performance, but like parts and stuff like that. It's also available right now. And I, I just, I like the way that they look. And I don't, and I like the 24 too, but I like this like completely. Uh, the S550, there's not much that I would really change. Love the tech involved with the S650. You know, the digital dash and all that stuff. They look like tablets, like, you know, iPads all over there anyway. But this is a 401A car and I have the digital dash too. When I see the new new, when I see the 2024 Mustang, it doesn't move me enough to want to jump ship from the 2022 that I have now. And I just got this car and I took advantage of the Ford special rates. Like they had the special 0% financing and all that stuff. And I mean, that's the best way to buy a car, right? The payment is really cheap on this Mustang. Thing. So if we go to a 2024, I'd probably have to trade this in because there's no special rates on the new ones yet. And there's a huge price increase. When you're specking a dark horse, it gets insane. Anyway, it's a lot of money. Your average high school or young college student is not going to be able to afford this car very easily, especially in today's market with inflation, so on and so forth, let alone a dark horse. But speaking of special variants, I'm, I'm not gonna say that I I won't buy an S650, I just won't buy a 2024. I wanna, I wanna make that very clear. I might buy an S650, but it won't be a 2024. I am waiting to see if Ford is going to release more performance variants, more nameplates, okay? I'm talking about the new GT500. Are they gonna bring back the Cobra nameplate? Are they gonna bring back a Boss? So that's kind of, in a nutshell, what I'm waiting to see is if Ford is going to release some other performance variants into the S650 uh, line at some point. You know, it could be a year from now, it could be a couple of years from now. I just wanna see because the dark horse is gonna be, everybody's bread and butter, but is gonna buy one. And I don't want to afford a $70,000, 500 horsepower, naturally aspirated, Mustang GT when I have this one for a small tiny payment and I can tune it I can supercharge it I can twin turbo and I can do whatever I want to with this car I can run E85 NA I can do all of those things because it's already available so why jump to a 500 horsepower Mustang 2024 that you can't tune right away so you're gonna run out of content gonna run out of fun because you can't add more power not easily anyway not for at least a little while so that's kind of we're pulling a dealership now that's kind of my whole thought process behind this thing is maybe we hold out for a couple of years to see what Ford is going to do how they're gonna to respond to this whole EPA madness and everything and you know, and see what the future holds for Mustang. In the meantime, I'm very happy with my S550. I love everything we've done with it so far. We've done a, a bunch of cosmetics and we've got power on the way. We're gonna be able to tune this car. We're gonna have a lot of fun, but they're gonna make this car fast. But if we got a 2024, we're gonna have to put all those performance modifications on hold because they won't be readily available. I still wanna see the car in person at the end of the day. I still wanna, just reserve final judgment until I see that car in person and then go from there. I wanna see if the Cobra nameplate is gonna come back. I wanna see if there's gonna be a GT500, same car, uh, or if they're gonna bring back a Boss or something absolutely just crazy in a couple of years. And mostly that's what I'm waiting for. And I'm going to enjoy and build this 2022 because we can and it's cheap. All right guys, back in the garage. So we have a fixed rear quarter panel. Yeah, it was just a tiny little dent. Anyway, he was able to knock it out like no problem. So we are back to perfect now. Just kind of an embarrassing story how it happened, but you know, I think you guys understand. I love these things. I've had a ton of them. You can mod them, you can build them, you can do all those things, you can tune them, you can do everything right now. And with the 2024, time is going to tell. And I wanna see that car in person before I order one. If I did order one, I would want it all. It is the new new, right? 
right? So I would want all the tech, all the options, everything. So, and it would be a $70,000 car. I, I can't justify spending that amount of money on a car that you can't tune right away and have fun with for a couple of years. Will I eat my words in, in a year from now when HP tuners cracks the PCMs and all? I don't know, maybe, but and if that happens, we will come back to the 2024 or 25 and take a hard look at the S650 and see if that's something that we want to move forward on. But if you can't build them, you can't tune them, you can't go fast, what's the freaking point? With this, sky's the limit as far as what we can do, and we're going to push that limit here very soon. Parts are on the way. They are ordered. Go fast parts are coming to this build here hopefully sooner than later. Um, supply and demand issues and stuff like that getting delayed, but things are in the works for now we're gonna have fun with our 2022 mustang gt guys get ready for more content subscribe if you have not and make sure you turn that bell notification on for future videos because we're just getting started with the things we've done so far anyway uh, let me know if you can relate in the comments down below what do you think about the 2024? Have you warmed up to it yet? Are you still waiting to see what Ford's going to come out with? I mean, what is your direction, your thought process? I'd love to interact with you guys down in the comments down below. Let me know your thoughts. Until next video, I'll see all of you guys later. God bless. Have a great day. Goodbye.